Hey y'all, Irick Sky here, and welcome back to uh, to Irick Sky Show. And I'm going to do this every Thursday at noon New York City time. So this is episode number six of hundreds more episodes coming soon. And we're going to hit on various topics today. Some of the most uh, some of the most popular topics on Irick Sky's Adventure Channel from the week. Now, if you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. It's YouTube.com forward slash Irix guy and share with others too because I've you know it's it's your viewership that makes this show possible because it's your comments that enable me to create videos and then create a an environment that's entertaining and, and potentially educational for all of us so without further ado let's jump into the show uh, if there's show topics that you would like to see in future episodes of Irix guys live show Send me a message by way of my Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash irixguy. Drop me an email by way of irixguy.com, and uh, I'll do my best to uh, to incorporate that into an upcoming live show. Now, you can comment live while you're watching live. Just look over. It's probably over to the right side of your, uh, of your YouTube video view. There's probably a comments box. So ask me questions add feedback live and I'll, I'll try my best to respond live. I'm going to keep this show uh, to an hour long duration once a week. So there ought to be plenty of time. Uh, oh, someone said you changed your setup a little. Yup. <laughs> yeah, I did. I've, I, I was actually kind of in a rush today. I was, I was out of the studio and then I, and obviously this show is my priority every Thursday, uh, but I was out of the studio and I, I need to work, what I want to do before next week, so it'll be interesting to see what y'all think about next week. I'm going to try to tweak the setup, and I'm going to try to pick up. Uh, I've got some boxes on the floor. This is a an a four bay uh, USB 3.0 uh, serial ATA hard drive enclosure. So I've got miscellaneous junk sitting around. I don't, you know, I don't doctor this up. But what I do want to do, since I did invest in this furniture, I want to make this set look even better. <laughs> that's that's funny you notice that. I appreciate that. So let's jump into the hot topic, and I know a lot of people have uh, have observed this. Some people sent me comments they're like, "Hey, man, have you seen the new drone that's coming out in 2016?" Now, obviously, off the top of my head, when I think of 2016, I think of the GoPro drone, the actual GoPro company that makes the GoPro camera, putting out a GoPro branded drone, and I am super stoked about that because that's something that in my opinion, is is likely going to be epic. So it wasn't that, and it wasn't the Lily camera, which I had the, the Lily camera ordered. Uh, that's the drone, of course, that, that follows you around, and it's, uh, and it's waterproof. What the Lily does not have is obstacle avoidance. So what really intrigued me about the drone that was, that was just announced, and, and check the link within this video's description. You can find a link to it and all of the other topics that I'll be discussing during today's live show. Uh, but this is called the Flyby, F-L-Y-B-I. Uh, I, I mispronounced it Flyby, but it's, I think it's actually pronounced Flyby. But what this does, and I'm looking at, um, uh, looking at the specs here in real time as we, as we go through this show, but what this does, this brings a lot of new features to the table. Now, first of all, I want to say it is something that's being, uh, that's being crowdfunded. So if you're not familiar with crowd crowdfunding, at a high level, the way it works is that uh, someone has a product and they want to bring it to market. So they seek the uh, the interest of a large group of people by way of the internet, the crowd, to help fund it. So you can check that link, and there's various things you can do. If you do decide to donate to the project, you don't just and I did I did contribute some uh, some cash to the uh, to the flyby uh, project. I, I, but and I'm and I'm hoping to also get one of the pre-release, uh, one of the pre-release products. So check to the right if you check out that site. There's different combos. If you if you donate X amount of dollars, then you can get uh, you you can get your hands on uh, various versions of the flyby or the flyby rather. I'm sorry. So the flyby on paper it looks really cool. Now from my perspective, uh, being the 4K Ultra HD guy. I'm disappointed that it does not yet have a 4K camera, but that's not a deal breaker. Neither does the Lily camera that's coming out in uh, 2016. So it's not a deal breaker. Uh, what I like about this, when I look at it, I like the innovation. I like the backpack idea. Now, is that backpack waterproof 
it, to any degree, I'm not sure. I'm assuming it's probably not. But what I do like is that how it fits in a small, uh, it seems to be a small backpack, but that backpack also doubles as a, uh, as a charging station. So the drone, if the battery gets low, it'll fly back to the backpack. Obviously the backpack would be open on, and it, and it says you can mount it to the top of a car as well, but it'll fly back to that. It'll land and it'll, it'll autonomously swap out the battery. So on paper, that's a really cool feature and that's definitely a first. Uh, also the fact that it's integrating those battery recharging capabilities into a backpack. So it's using the case as a charger of sorts, which is nice. You know, that's less bulk you got to carry around. I like how the flyby has, it has obstacle avoidance. Now looking at uh, uh, drones from a safety point of view, and you know I'm a huge advocate of drone safety. Watch my drone evangelist videos on droneevangelist.com and you'll see how, you know, hell bent upon drone safety I am. Because if we're not safe as hobbyists, uh, this, this hobby is going to be quickly ripped away uh, from uh, from all of us responsible individuals, so it's those irresponsible acts that uh, that put drones into the spotlight in a negative way. But I like how flyby includes obstacle avoidance, and then also it comes with prop guards. So just looking at it and check it out for yourself. I mean, you know, looking at it, it looks kind of like a. Um, it reminds me of the Bebop. It reminds me of of what's expected to come with the Lily camera but it seems to have some cool features. It's, it's almost like they, they looked at the various drones that are out there and, and they found ways to, uh, uh, to further improve the features. And then obviously one thing is the wrist wearable remote. Now, how, how will all of this perform once it's in our hands? I mean, that's, we can all speculate, but until we have an actual workable product in our possession, it's, it's really hard to, uh, it's hard to say how it will or will not perform. But it's, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's neat. Tell me what you think. Check out the, uh, the flyby link within this video's description and research it for yourself. I'm going to get over to some, uh, to some live fan comments here. Uh, one comment says, do you think if the drone is FPV goggles, it will have light bridge? Uh, I wouldn't, uh, if you're talking about the flyby, I wouldn't assume, um, uh, my expectation, and obviously without having hands on, I don't, this is just speculation, but my expectation is that the flyby would likely not have the range and or the, uh, the, the overall performance from, from an FPV perspective of the Phantom, of the Phantom 3, because in my opinion, the Phantom 3, the professional and the advanced using the light bridge, they've really perfected uh, that real-time communications, those real-time communications for the, uh, for the flow of video. Well, you know, FPV, first person view video. Someone says, I don't know if you've had the same issue, but my Phantom 3 Professional, whenever I turn it on, will display a message, I am you warming up, and it takes two minutes to, to fly. I've actually had that issue several times, and you can check out my post, uh, go to 400 or below.com and check out my IMU calibration blog post. If you perform the IMU calibration, uh, there's a good chance that that'll go away. Now, with that said, uh, when I've updated my firmware on my Phantom 3 Professional, I have had that problem resurface. But by reperforming the IMU calibration and obviously followed up by a compass calibration, I was able to uh, I was able to uh, do away with that problem. But again, anytime I update the firmware, it often resurfaces. So that's that's uh, that's a that's a nuisance, but try you know check out my IMU calibration tutorial on 400 or below.com blog, and that that may be able to point you in the right direction there. And it's good possibility it could be a firmware bug as well. Uh, you know how uh, how accurate is that message? I mean I I don't know. I mean maybe it's just throwing trash our way, and and it may not need anything. So you did the IMU, and it still say says it. Uh, did you let your uh, did you let your Phantom Three cool down? I mean, was it in a cool environment? Because I've heard reports of people run the IMU calibration, and the Phantom's not not that cool, or if they run the IMU calibration, it's not on a completely flat surface that it may not work properly. So those are a few suggestions you may want to uh, you may want to check out. Uh, how big is the uh, how big is the flyby compared to the DJI or the Bebop? Uh, let's see if I've got the measurements here. I'm I'm just looking at the link 
that they've posted. Let's see if it's got measurements. Scrolling down. Okay, size. Okay, it says the height is uh, 25 centimeters. And then if you're looking at it from the top down, it's 40 centimeters by 36 centimeters. So that's... Uh, I'd, I'd have to measure. Actually, let, let me get a... Uh, well, my tape measure's in the other room, or I would get the tape measure and measure the Phantom 3. But let's just look at this in inches. So basically, with the and it's showing it with the prop guards on, about 16 inches. So... I mean, I'm just eyeballing this, but I would say a foot's probably about there. It may actually, it may actually be wider than the uh, than the Phantom Three. But let's, you know, let's measure this and check all this out and find out for sure. Uh, another question here it says on Phantom Three, how do you operate the orbit and follow me? Uh, check out my tutorial on uh, 400 or below.com in the blog section and I've got a, uh, a tutorial on Phantom 3 intelligent flight modes and I step through how to uh, how to engage it basically I take off in P mode uh, once I'm airborne I then switch to the F mode F is in Frank uh, once I'm in the F mode I'm then able to uh, I'm then able to choose follow me waypoint point of interest, all of those modes pop up, but they will not pop up unless you're airborne and unless you're in F mode. At least that's the, uh, at least that's the current, um, the current behavior with the current version of the DJI Go app. Uh, someone asked, someone asked what the current subject is. Actually, we're, we're talking about, uh, talking about a variety of things. Right now it's drone centric. Uh, we talked about the flyby which is a new drone that's coming out. Check the link within this video's description. You can find more information about it. Uh, also talking about some uh, uh, some Phantom 3 procedural type uh, type questions. But obviously anything, this is a live show. This is your show. So anything you want to talk about, obviously uh, keep it appropriate and let's uh, let's try to try to focus upon topics that are that are somewhat closely related to the channel's content. Uh, so let's segue into um, let's segue into Phantom Three lens filters, and this has been a theme that actually came out uh, this week. People were asking; they were saying, "What's the best?" Uh, one person asked, one of my top fans asked, "If if you could only own one Phantom Three lens filter, what would it be?" And it's actually a tough question because it's really a matter of what you're looking for uh, from a video style perspective. For me, if I could only own one, it would be this ND4. And again, check the link within this video's description. I've got a link to all of these. Uh, but I like the ND4 because it doesn't darken the image too much. But when I film with an ND4 versus, say, a uh, the factory uh, filter that comes on the Phantom 3 camera, obviously the ND4, from my experience, it makes the it makes the video look visually smoother. And that's, that's the way I interpret how it looks. Uh, there's also the... Uh, the polarizer filter, the CPL filter, uh, that's gonna that's gonna enhance the the color saturation, which basically makes if you look at if you fly, and I encourage you to fly your Phantom with the various filters and see for yourself. So fly with the uh, with the factory filter, you know, not screwing anything off of the Phantom first. Fly with that first, see what it looks like in the same environment, back to back, same lighting and everything. Fly with an ND4 then fly with a polarizer, then fly with an ND8. Between the ND4 and the ND8, you're going to notice that the ND8 is going to make the image a lot darker. And even on a bright, sunny day, from my experience, the ND8 is almost too dark. Uh, the ND4, and obviously I always fly during daytime, uh, but the ND4 for me is a sweet spot because I get the smoother looking video, and then I can go into Final Cut Pro 10 and post-production and if I want to add the saturation, I can do that. So I, I filmed with the ND4 filter on the Phantom 3, but then I go into Final Cut Pro 10, and I adjust the color saturation to basically get a uh, to get a CPL polarizer filter type effect. 
without a filter on the on the actual phantom so if I could only own one it would be the ND4 and that's just because I get the best all-around results so I get the smoothness of the filter and then I get the flexibility in post of being able to go in and adjust the saturation but with that said you may be the person that just wants to film with the CPL filter also known as polarizer because you don't want to deal with anything in post you want to get that color separate saturation rather and just make the make the colors look really good in the video without having to do any post-production work so that's completely up to you um, okay here's we've got a bunch more questions uh, the next one is is that a green screen or is or is the wall just painted green actually great question and uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna update the uh, the videos comments to include let me make a note for that after this show concludes I'm gonna add a link there to the um, to the setup that I'm using but the short answer is that it is a green wall but I put a lot of work into the studio so I I started out with um, with chroma key fabric which worked great but I like the wall better because it's it doesn't flop around in the wind and most importantly in a small studio like I've got because rent here is super expensive in a smaller studio what's great is that I can use the uh, the the extra space whereas if I had a green screen in here I would have you know that would be occupying space where I'm sitting in this chair so it's a it's a great uh, it's a great setup for my environment and, and for most any environment it probably would be so check the link within this video's description after the show concludes and I'm going to post a link there I've done a step-by-step -step tutorial explaining how I chroma key and my setup and everything and if, if you have any questions beyond that just ask and I'll be happy to uh, I'll be happy to share uh, I've got some more comments in as well let's see on the Phantom 3 app I found out today on my iPad Air if you touch the screen and keep your finger there you can pan up and down you're talking about panning the camera up and down the the actual camera on the gimbal that that just curious I've, I've never tried that that's really cool what do you use the other two cases for behind you well that's a great question I've got and, and actually I've got this one here and then I've got the other two there's that's a larger one it's really a matter of where where my where my filming's taking me and normally I use this one and you can uh, you can find actually you can find all of these on 400 or below but that one is more optimal it's got wheels on it so when I'm going through an airport etc obviously when I travel I don't travel with with a small amount of gear I mean I've got clothes I've got to wear throughout whatever duration I'm in the filming location and then I've got uh, obviously all of my camera equipment my 4k cameras then I've got the drone so if I'm rolling through an airport, I'm going to use the the the, um, the orange one with the wheels and the pop out handle. It just makes it more convenient when you got a backpack on, carry on luggage, check bag to and from the the uh, the counter to check it below the plane and all that. So that's that's why I've got these two, and then the other one, the yellow one, which I love, is my original that um, that I started out with, but I. Part of part of my adventure with this adventure channel, with Irish Guys Adventure Channel, is actually playing with the different cases. So I don't want to just use one product and say, "Oh, that's that's the best." I, it's it's an experimentation that I perform as a form of entertainment, but it's also functional, as I just mentioned. I mean, I've got you know the ability to roll that through an airport, but if I'm just wanting to throw something over my shoulder and go out to a field. I can take this one or I can take my yellow one and the yellow one also has wheels but this one the orange one is bigger than the uh, than the yellow one on the inside but I gotta maximize my window here okay there we go it says how do you know how to do photos in the HDR mode it supposedly takes three photos but do we hold down the button or just push button to take the photos once great question and that's something that I want to uh, thoroughly investigate uh, within future field tests because for me I primarily filmed continuous 4k 30 frames per second video and for my purposes I've then extracted stills from that 4k video within Final Cut Pro 10 and post 
So I haven't really used the Phantom 3 as a still camera. So that's that's on my to-do list. And I'm gonna that's that's something I'm gonna check out. I'm gonna add that to my checklist of things to uh, to test. Uh, it says, yes, mate, you can put the cam up and down, talking about holding your finger down. That's a really cool tip because a lot of people, uh, including myself, probably didn't know that existed. Because remember, if you if you use the old app for the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, the DJI Vision app, before they came out with the upgraded controller, you know, it had the little soft wheel in there that, when well, that was your only way at that point in time to scroll the camera up and down until they released the upgraded remote. So that's cool. They still included that functionality in the DJI Go app but you just didn't realize it's there. That's really cool. Now, what is the remote that you hold in your hand when you do a video? Uh, check, uh, I'm gonna post a link within this video's description for the green screen, and I'll feature that there. It's actually the remote for one of my studio cameras, and the reason that I hold it is that it enables me when I'm standing in front of the, so here's, here's how I do it. I've got a stationary tripod that never moves and the reason I do that is that it's always pointing in the same direction the lighting my overhead lighting and you can find the lights all, all the lights and everything I use you'll be able to find within that link that I'll post after the show but it keeps everything consistent because when I when I film a new face on video all I have to do is put the camera on the tripod and it's got a plate that remains attached for the tripod that I use so it's already aligned perfectly and then the remote, based upon what I'm doing, do I want a, a closer up of my upper body? Do I have objects in my hand? That enables me to zoom in and out based upon how much of uh, how much I need to have within that frame. So that's why I always have the remote, and I also use the remote to uh, to stop and start the recording. Now keep in mind, I'm using that remote, the little black remote that's in my hands, but I've also got. You'll often see me with a lavalier mic. And then that's connected to my iPod Touch because that's recording the audio piece. And then I sync up the camcorder audio and the lavalier audio, which is more high quality in post. And then I mute the, uh, excuse me, then I mute the, uh, the camcorder audio, leaving only the lavalier audio that, that provides a more professional audio sound when, when you watch the video. Uh, thank you for the iMac computer specs. Does it crash a lot with Final Cut Pro 10 editing 4K clips? Uh, actually, mine, my crashes occur. Well, yeah, it would be. It, it, it occasionally crashes when I'm editing, but it's typically what I found causes mine to crash is that if I have one project and then I jump to another, or no, not that. When I've got one project open, and I've sent it to compressor to export, and then it kind of stalls my system resources. I think that that has caused the crash on mine, and I don't really understand why. But it's it's not a problem. I mean, it's 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 very reliable, but it's still uh, it crashes on occasion. And by the way, that uh, the computer equipment that I use that'll be linked within that green screen post that I'm going to add to the comments after the show concludes. Someone says, I have tried to update to the latest firmware, will not update. I formatted the card and it will not update. I check results and it says version. So when you formatted the card, you formatted it within the DJI Go app. And my next question would be, if that's the case, have you tried using a different card? Uh, because I know that from my experience, certain cards, even some of the leading brand cards, did not like the Phantom 3. And I've run into the same thing with GoPro cameras as well. So. Now, the one I use is just a cheap card. It's not even rated. It's really not even one that would be optimal for 4K, but when I film 4K with it, it turns out great. It's the one I've used for all my uh, Phantom 3 4K videos, and you can find it on 400 or below.com. That's the card that I use with my Phantom 3. It's very cheap. Haven't had any problems with it. And that's, that's also with the uh, firmware update process. Same card I use for that as well as filming the 4K video. So,
yeah the macbook air is good this and the macbook air works well and then this is the macbook pro right here it works well as well uh, let me go ahead i'm going to go ahead and post that link for everyone so this this will probably update the uh video's description live be just a second here and i'll get that in for us Okay, so I'm adding the how to green screen link right now to this video's description. Hopefully this won't crash our live stream or anything. I don't think it will. Okay, so the video description now, you should see an additional link I added that says green screen setup. And that's where I talk about all the green screen stuff. And then also, if you look at the, uh, the link that says Final Cut Pro 10 video setting, um, that's, that's where you can find the, the computers that I use and then also the external storage. Because ultimately, with this video, it's, it's too large to store internally. Even if you had a Mac that, that had a large internal drive, it's probably not going to be enough. So for that reason, everything's external. Well, that and I get the performance of the flash for the speed of running the app and the editing, but I get the large amount of storage because of the, uh, the external drive. Do you think that Adobe Premiere is better for editing drone footage? Um, yeah, it may, the, link, the link may have to, it's in the video's description. I, I added it after Final Cut Pro X video editing and before DJI Phantom 3 lens filters. So, may have to refresh the page for it to appear. Uh, but if you go to snagbear.com, S-N-A-G-B-E-A-R.com, you can find it there under the how-to section of snagbear.com. Uh, as far as Adobe Premiere is concerned, I will state my opinion of Adobe products. I grew up with Adobe products. I grew up using, uh, well, I grew up building my own PCs and, and my own Linux boxes, my own FreeBSD boxes. Uh, so I grew up within the, um, you know, within the x86 hardware realm. Uh, with that said, at that point in time, Adobe offered some of the most, I mean, most excellent products on the market. You know, Photoshop and uh, and, and obviously Adobe Premiere for the video editing. Uh, but what, with that said, from my experience with their with their new their newer products, I just and this this may be because I've been corrupted by using a Mac computer, but since I've gone Mac for video and photo, just being able to drag and drop and just keep things simple, and most importantly, instead of running on a uh, on a Windows-based operating system, I'm now running on Mac OS X, which is Unix, uh, which from my experience is a lot more rock solid uh, than a Windows operating system. So for that reason, it would be hard for me to say that that Adobe is. Uh, uh, that Adobe Premiere is better, and obviously you can run. They've got a they've got a Mac version of Adobe Premiere, but it uh, been able to do what I do with Final Cut Pro 10, and then compressor to export the 4K video, and just have everything just work and work well. I couldn't imagine using anything else. Uh, great question. Actually, I I'm pretty much all over, uh, no, um, mostly in the Caribbean. Uh, that's why you'll notice that I've got a lot of. Uh, a lot of Caribbean footage. So yeah, no, no one place. Kind of a kind of a drifter from a uh, uh, from a video production perspective. Have you ordered the iPhone 6s Plus yet? Uh, great question. Actually, I got online to order it, and I was ready to. Uh, I use the AT and T provider, and I was ready to order the iPhone 6 Plus, and and I got on there, and then you know you got to check your check your uh, What's the word for it? Check your check your ability to upgrade. You know what what's allowed based upon your plan. So long story short, I got all the way to the cart, 
And then it said, not all the way to the cart, but all the way through the AT&T, you know, your, your status check or whatever. And it was telling me that I wouldn't be eligible for the, for the, the good price until like April that I was going to have to pay, I think it was $800 or whatever. So for that reason, I'm not going to spend that much to upgrade to, uh, to the latest iPhone. I mean, I know it's got 4k and it, it definitely, uh, from that perspective for me would be upgrade worthy, but for me to spend full retail price for a phone. No, I'm going to wait till, uh, I'm going to wait till April of, uh, of 2016. And then, by that time, I may just hold out for the 7. I don't know, the iPhone 7. But I do want an iPhone with 4K because right now that's the only that's the only device that I carry with me that does not have 4K capabilities. I got you know the 4K camcorder, the 4K point and shoot, the bridge camera, the 4K drone. Is 4K, is, here's another question. Is cinema 4K better than 4K 30, okay, so here's the best way to describe 4K cinema. And I'm gonna pull open, I don't have the specs. Uh, this this will help to explain it. So cinema 4K is a resolution of 4096 by 2160. And the 4K Ultra HD, so if you go to your, you know, your local place or, or uh, wherever to, to look at TVs and they're 4K Ultra HD TVs, most of those are 3840 by 2160. So the second number is the same, 2160, but the first with the cinema 4K, you're getting 4096 instead of 3840. So it's it's larger in physical size. The resolution is 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 greater. Uh, so from that perspective, it would be a it would be a sharper resolution, but is a is it a better resolution? Here's the way I would answer that. I don't use Cinema 4K. I use 4K 30 frames per second auto. And the reason I do, I don't have to crop anything because it just fits because I'm filming content that anybody with a smart TV should be able to watch and, and it would fill the screen perfectly. The advantage to using Cinema 4K is that if you did do some stuff in post, you know, maybe a zoom in, a zoom out, that sort of thing. You've got the larger physical format to play with, but not much larger. It's not larger enough. Now, if it was 8K, I could see the the benefit there because if it was 8K, then you would have twice the the physical size to work with as 4K. So if you did want to do stuff in post production, zoom in, zoom out, you'd have a lot more physical space to play with while not degrading that 4K video project. You're publishing it in 4K. You know, you don't want anything degraded. Uh, but just jumping from from 4K Ultra HD to f Cinema 4K, I just personally for me, it's not worth it for me. It's just it's just extra work that I've got to do in post, and it's not providing a, a much larger canvas from the perspective of being able to zoom in and zoom out in post. That's just my opinion, and I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, that use Cinema 4K for uh, for other reasons. It may be a form, and I'm not a Hollywood film producer, but there may be a reason why uh, someone within that realm uh, may would use Cinema 4K versus 4K Ultra HD. Uh, do folks know that when you're in point of interest, you still have control of your sticks? That's actually a great observation. I, I discovered the same thing. Uh, not only your sticks, but also the uh, the gimbal wheel up and down for your camera. So, uh, and that's actually how for, for me with the, with the point of interest, when I flew up and set the first thing and then I defined the radius and then I started the, started the orbit, I would do that. And then I would adjust the, the camera gimbal wheel up and down to optimally, um, optimally align that. So that was a cool, uh, a cool feature. It's another comment says, I love the way you set up your 4K camera and just let it record from static point for your green screen backdrops. Typically, how long do you record? Um, well, um, that's that's a great question. Most of the time, if I'm in a hurry, if I'm at a location and I'm in a hurry, at a minimum, I want to get five minutes because five minutes, most of my face on video 
segments where I'm repurposing footage that I shot previously on location when I'm repurposing that footage in front of the green screen typically my face on video videos will likely be five minutes or less so I want at least five minutes optimally what I will go for is 30 minutes the reason being with 30 minutes it's a situation where I can then not only repurpose it as one green screen backdrop but uh, you know say the environment changes say a car comes by or a boat comes by or something like that. If I've got 30 minutes of video, then I can take that one video clip and potentially make, uh, let's see, six times five is 30. So if I'm doing five minute videos, potentially six unique green screen backdrops. And on top of that, by doing the 30 minutes or so, then I have the luxury of creating a time lapse out of it. So I've, I've created that video for the purposes of repurposing in the future as a green screen backdrop. Uh, but I've also created the opportunity to create a time-lapse video and it just really opens up the flexibility and then also if you have something that passes through whatever you're filming during that time and it it's something you don't want to see like a garbage truck or something along those lines then you've still got the 30 minutes of clips so say that took two minutes for that to go through you still got 28 minutes so I like to get as much video as possible and that's why I've got uh, uh, right now, I think I've got, let's see, 26 by 2. I've got almost 50 terabytes of external storage, which seems excessive, but I keep all the good stuff. I don't, you know, I don't keep the face on video portions because that's, I can recreate that. But the actual environments that, that are filmed to function as backdrops, I retain all of those. Yeah, that recording or not question, that's uh, that's interesting. Whenever you are in the DJI app and you are in point of interest, you can't see if you're recording or not. And I don't know what y'all do. What I've done with point of interest or actually the other flight modes as well, I've always initiated the, uh, the video recording before I go into F mode and, um, and then choose whatever intelligent flight feature, whether it's POI, waypoint, or uh, or follow me. So uh, how do y'all do it? Y'all do y'all do a different way. I think they could. I think there's definitely some room for uh, interface improvement there on DJI's behalf if they could uh, if they could make that more uh, more streamlined. Though the first few times I flew, I realized I didn't have the video after the after landing. So what other questions does everyone have? I mean, we've got today's show. We've got about um, we've got about twenty more minutes. Oh yeah, another thing about the flyby drone. That I thought was interesting is that they said if uh, it's it's posted on that link that's it's in this video's description, the flyby link. But there's a comment in there if you if you read through all that, it'll say uh, it'll say that they you know if they hit a certain amount of funding, they may be able to release a 360 degree camera. And I know if you're like me, you probably assume that a 360 degree camera for a drone would be a game changer. So that that was cool to hear that. Uh, any ideas why I can't get follow me to work on iPhone 5 or iPad Air? Well, I can tell you with the iPad Air, if it doesn't have um, if it doesn't have the uh, the GPS, follow me is probably not going to work. Uh, in the iPhone 5, I've never tested. I've used iPhone 6 Plus, which with that the follow me would work, and I've used iPod Touch, the the model that. Uh, it's one of the current models. You can you can find it on 400 or below.com, the one that I use. But with iPod Touch, with that version, Follow Me would not work, but the other functionality would.
Yeah, actually, the uh, the Epson FPV glasses that you mentioned, I've got those listed on 400orbelow.com, and I've used uh, the Cinemizers as well. But I'm more, and it's just it's just my style. I I like to uh, I like to fly line of sight. So for that reason, I, I don't use the FPV goggles, but I know a lot of people, especially if you've got two people in the field, it could really be cool to pass them to a friend and uh, and have them experience the the virtual in cockpit uh, type sensation. So they're they're neat. Have you seen any bugs yet in iOS nine? I haven't, uh, but I'm sure a lot of people have because I don't know if you updated your phone. It hit it hit my phone last night it said ios 9 dot i think it was 9.01 or whatever it popped up as an update so apparently that was likely to address some updates that were that were quickly discovered after the launch of ios 9 so have you have you run in have you encountered any problems with it yet or is that uh so just oh and speaking of that that's an interesting question because if you're if you're using ios 9 you're using notes and some other applications within iOS 9 will give you a little warning about uh, about updating or whatever. And I think that's related to the new Mac OS 10 El Capitan is coming out. And I think that comes out on the, let's see, the 30th. And that's going to be a, um, you know, the next Mac OS 10 update. So for that reason, and I don't know if y'all have done it, but I know with mine when it popped up that message, because I use notes and I like to keep, the uh, the notes application synced um, synced among my multiple Apple devices iPod Touch iPhone six plus uh, the iMac and then the MacBook uh, Pro so I haven't I haven't accepted that yet because I don't want to do it until I've got El Capitan on this computer and my other uh, on my other Mac but that looks like that's going to be a cool operating system and it brings up a, it brings up an interesting question and I've I've dug and I've dug and I haven't been able to find it does anyone know if that's expected to be a free Mac OS 10 update or is it going to be a scenario where we have to pay to download it? I mean, I haven't heard. I mean, the, or, or, or all of the future Mac OS 10 updates going to be free. I don't know. The flight simulator. That's a great question. Let me get my, uh, let me get my device here and we'll see if it's, see if it shows up. I know at one point it wasn't on, uh, it wasn't on Android devices, it was only on iOS. But we're going to see if it's on here. Let's see, I'm going to fire up my fire up my iPod Touch. And then obviously I'll have to turn on my Phantom also. I think that's kind of silly, they make you turn on the Phantom to run the simulator. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if we can get simulator up here. See what happens here. I have had access to it, but I haven't uh, haven't tested it since the uh, DJI Go app update. I did it with the DJI Pilot app. Okay, I found it. 
So what you have to do, and I don't know why they try to hide. It's almost like they hide this. But if you want your, uh, if you want your DJI Go app, I know y'all can't see the screen, but as soon as you launch it, where it says it's got the blue bar, whatever it says enter the camera view, and it shows your uh, your Phantom connected above it. If you look at the top right of your of that page, there's a little question mark inside of a circle. If you click that, then you can do Start Flight Simulator. But again, you know you gotta. I don't know why, but you got to have your Phantom own to be able to uh, to do this. So yeah, it's it's definitely in there. And something I would do, and I'm I'm doing the flight simulator right now. Uh, something I would strongly recommend. Is that if you are using this flight simulator, I would definitely keep the uh, keep the propellers off of your Phantom Three when you're using it because to start it up within the simulator, I had to perform the same uh, the same function that I would if if I was actually out in the field ready to fly the uh, the Phantom Three. So yeah, it works. I'm I'm flying it virtually right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. But again, this is with uh, this is with the iPod Touch, so it's an iOS device. So it's probably uh, probably not going to work on Android. And I I have heard some people say that, and I don't know which Android device they were using, but some people have commented it was there, and I'm not sure if it was. I haven't personally validated it. But again, just when you when you fire things up, when you're at that screen, it says Enter Camera View. Look towards the top right for the question mark in the circle. And click that because that's how I got to. Uh, uh, that's how I got to the simulator. So it's in there. Oh, and another tip: if you're using these short iOS cables like I do, what I do when they're not in use, I keep it attached to the uh, to the controller. And then I just wrap it around there because I have misplaced when I would take it off. I misplaced probably two of these. And then I said, you know what? That's not worth it. I'm having to rebuy these cables. So if I just keep it on the controller, it's it's less uh, less probable that I'll uh, that I'll lose it. So lots of good stuff today. We've got, we've actually got a huge, huge viewership. So this is great. What, uh, are there any topics you would like to, to have on, uh, on next week's live show? So I'm, I'm open for anything and it's something I've got a week. Uh, along with my other projects, I got a week to research and and put together whatever. So I'm I'm willing to uh, to feature whatever on the show if there's something that everyone would would like to uh, like to address. Well, cool. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining, and, and we'll do the same time next week, uh, noon New York City time. And I've, I've got to run. I'm going to fix me a um, fix me a turkey wrap. Give me a tortilla shell and some turkey and some uh, low-fat mayonnaise and mustard and, and go do some exercise after that. So I appreciate everyone's viewership. Again, check the link within this video's description. You can find links to everything that was discussed during today's show. Subscribe if you haven't already, youtube.com forward slash irixgaff. And a, an offline non-live version of this video will be available on Irish Guys Adventure Channel. So uh, check out my playlist there and you can, uh, you can find this episode and all the previous episodes as well. And I appreciate your viewership. Y'all have a good day.